Hey guys and welcome back to another organic chemistry video. Today we're going to be going over question 8 from the 2023 International Chemistry Olympiad that just happened a month ago and this is going to be called the Nazarov reaction which is a pretty cool reaction. It starts off by explaining basically what it is. So if you have sort of a double alpha beta unsaturated ketone like on both sides then it can do resonance to form these Witter ionic structure over here and you can do a four pi electrocyclization to form a five membered ring which upon proton transfers forms this alpha beta unsaturated cyclopentenone so let's read question 8.1 draw the pi molecular orbitals to describe the nazarov reaction fill in the electrons into the respective energy levels mark with an x the homo highest occupied molecular orbital and the lumo lowest unoccupied molecular orbital for this exercise you can consider the divinal ketone as a pentadienyl cation with five p orbitals. So we're essentially going to be sort of flipping out those and looking at it as a straight line with five different atoms like so. So if we scroll down to the answer sheet, we're going to be given all the different molecular orbital energy levels. So again, as it said, to consider it as a pentadienyl cation, we're going to draw in all of the p orbitals. This is going to be drawing a lot of eighth shapes. So this is going to be the frontier molecular orbital theory for electrocyclizations. So basically, when you have psi 1, that is going to have zero nodes. Psi 2 is going to have one node. Psi 3 is going to have two nodes. If it's psi n, you're going to have n minus 1 nodes. So the first one's going to have zero nodes. So all of the orbitals are going to be the same phase. The second one is going to have one node. So that means that half are in one phase, half are in the other, and the center is actually the node. So the coefficient is zero, so therefore we draw it as a dot. The third one's gonna have two nodes. So the first one's gonna be dark side up, then the next three are gonna be dark side down, and the last one is gonna be dark side up. Then the fourth one's gonna have three nodes. So this is gonna be a bit complicated, but we're gonna have up, down, then a zero coefficient, then up and then down again. And finally, the last one's gonna have four nodes, which is gonna be pretty simple. It's just alternating. So those are the molecular orbitals. And now to actually assign the electrons, it's gonna be four electrons, this is two times two pi electrons. So we're just gonna fill them up from the lowest energy levels going up. And then this is gonna be the HOMO, number one. And number two is gonna be the LUMO. So the HOMO is gonna be Psi two, and the LUMO is gonna be Psi three. The name should be pretty self-explanatory. So question 8.2, actually, let me scroll up to read the question. From the pi molecular orbitals you derived in task 8.1, predict under which conditions the Nazarov reaction of the divinyl ketone will proceed in a disrotatory or a conrotatory fashion. In the table on the answer sheet, mark with an X the conditions under which the reaction is allowed. So this is basically asking for the Woodward-Hoffman rules of electrocyclizations. The way I remember the rules is by remembering 64 disco. So this is kind of a phrase I memorized, I guess would be the right word to say. And basically the first number associates with the first half of the word and the second number with the second half. And I just memorized that this is for thermal. So basically if we have six electrons and it's thermal, then it's going to be disrotatory because six goes with disrotatory if it's thermal. If we have, for example, 12 electrons, which is going to be the 4 category because 12 is 4n and it's light activated, then let's see what we do. So we, we choose which number, which is going to be 4n, so it's going to be 4. So 4 associates with conrotatory, with thermochemical control, but we flip it with light control, so conrotatory goes to disrotatory. So that's how you figured things out. So to figure out whether or not thermal is disrotatory or conrotatory, we look at the fact that we have 4n electrons that associates to conrotatory and thermal. So that means that thermal conrotatory is going to be the correct one. And then photochemical is just going to be switching it. So that's just going to be disrotatory. The Nazarov reaction was used as a key reaction in the synthesis of farnesin. For both conditions below, draw one possible structure for each A and B, including stereochemistry. Note that the products of both reactions show a signal at 6.7 at to 6.73 ppm in the proton NMR. So we have 
this divinyl ketone and A is reacting it with boron trifluoride in DCM and B reacts it in the presence of light with DCE, dichloroethane. So the important thing to realize here is that A is going to be under thermochemical control and B is going to be under light. So if we remember back, thermal was conrotatory and light was disrotatory for four electrons. But what exactly does conrotatory and disrotatory mean? So let me draw this molecule from the point of view of the arrow. So we're going to have the two double bonds going into the plane of the paper, and we have a methyl group going towards the right, a hydrogen and the six-membered ring somewhere here. And over here, we have a hydrogen pointing towards the left, and the same six-membered ring continued over here. So what conrotatory means, con is kind of means the same. Conrotatory con means that when these react, the bonds are going to rotate in the same direction. So in this case, both counterclockwise. It could also go both clockwise. So that's not up to whether it's thermo or photochemical, that's just stereochemistry. However, disrotatory means that they are rotating in opposite directions. So first, let's figure out without stereochemical details what the reaction is gonna be. So again, it's a Nazarov reaction. So we're gonna have a five-membered ring in the center with two six-membered ring ne rings next to it. Now, if you just looked at this and the reaction scheme above, you would assume that this is the product that we get. However, let's revisit the text. It says it has a NMR peak between 6.7 and 6.73, which is in the region where hydrogens on sp2 carbon atoms are. But there is no hydrogen on an sp2 carbon atom in this molecule. So the way we kind of fix that is by moving the double bond over by one. And now we have this hydrogen atom, which would be in the 6.7-ish area. So without stereochemistry, this is going to be our molecule. So I will copy this over to the answer sheet. So A was thermal, which was conrotatory. And conrotatory gave us the substituents on opposite sides. Now it doesn't matter which one you draw because the solutions have a bunch of different combinations that you have. All that matters is that the hydrogen and the methyl group are on opposite sides of each other. And in fact, according to the solutions, this is not quite what happens. The real product is going to be when the methyl group is going down and the hydrogen is going up and we have the double bond on the right over here. So that's going to be A. And then for B, which is going to be the disrotatory, we're going to end up with both bonds on the same side. So once again, the double bond is on the right. So now we're going to have both either going down or both going up. I'm going to draw both going down because that's the actual product. But if you drew both coming up, that would also be an acceptable answer according to the solutions. All right, moving on to the next question. The synthesis of capnoline commences with unsaturated aldehyde C shown below. Treatment with conditions D followed by reaction with manganese dioxide supported on carbon gave divinyl ketone E shown below. Exposure to a mixture of P2O5 and MSOH yielded F, which was elaborated via a sequence of reactions to the unsaturated ketone I. So we're given the structure of MSOH, which is a strong acid, and THF, but who doesn't know what THF is? So we have an aldehyde here that gets turned into an alpha beta unsaturated ketone with D and an oxidation step. So this to me screams, this to me screams a nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl that gets turned into an OH and then is oxidized by manganese dioxide back to the ketone. But let's actually read the questions. That's very important. 8.4, choose the reagents from the list on the answer sheet that would be suitable as D. So as I said, we're looking for a nucleophile that could attack a carbonyl group which coincidentally is going to be vinyl magnesium bromide. Number two is not going to work because sodium borohydride would reduce the ketone and then vinyl lithium can't attack it. The cross coupling something isn't really going to work either. And if we used vinyl magnesium bromide with copper iodide, we would have conjugate addition. So only, only vinyl magnesium bromide is going to be the solution here. Next up, give the structure of intermediates F, G, and H, including their stereochemistry. So I'm just going to draw it in here, but the participants actually had to draw it in the answer sheet. I'm just going to draw it here so that we have everything available. So from E to F, we're going to have the, the acid and the P2O5 is just going to act 
to remove water from the reaction mixture. So what's gonna happen here? Well, actually, it's the Nazarov reaction. Notice this is a divinyl ketone, and the acid is going to protonate the ketone, which is gonna make it easier for the plus charge here to form, which is gonna make the Nazarov reaction form easier. So once we have the Nazarov reaction, so let's draw what we get. So we have the first five-membered ring, then the Nazarov reaction forms another five-membered ring, still have the ketones, still have the two methyls. And then in this case, the double bond is gonna be in the center because that's the more thermodynamically favorable product. And also if you look forward, we're gonna have a methyl group here, which we're gonna be adding in the next step. We have methyl, copper, lithium, whatever it's called in ethanol. So that's gonna be a conjugate addition of a methyl group, which is perfect right here. It's gonna add just like so. And the stereochemistry is already given to us in the product. So this is going to be G with the methyl group pointing up. And we still have the two methyls over there. Then we have this lithium acetylide that is just simply going to attack the carbonyl. It's just a nucleophilic addition to a carbonyl group. It's very simple chemistry. So we have OH and then we have the acetylene part. Still have the methyl group pointing up. I guess we're supposed to add the fact that the hydrogen is also pointing up, that that should be self-explanatory because it is a 5-5 ring junction, but why not? And then the two methyls, of course. Now we got to check whether or not that is correct. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 carbons. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 hydrogens and one oxygen. So that is the correct molecular formula. And then let's see if this can form that. So if we have acid and acid, the acid can eliminate the OH forming the double bond and it can add a water to the alkyne, which is gonna form a vinyl alcohol that is gonna tautomerize into a ketone. All right, let's move on with the next question. Enone I was then subjected to vinyl magnesium bromide and copper iodide and THF to give intermediate J, followed by ozonolysis to yield intermediate K, which shows a signal at 9.61 ppm in the hydrogen NMR. Treatment with 5% potassium hydroxide and a mixture of THF and ether yielded intermediate L. Hydrogenation with a platinum catalyst and under an atmosphere of hydrogen yielded M, which finally gave rise to capnoline. All right, so we have I, which is a unsaturated ketone, an alpha beta unsaturated ketone. We're reacting it with vinyl magnesium bromide in the presence of copper one. That is a standard conjugate addition. So this is a pretty simple, Pretty simple question so far. We're going to add it over here, and the cascade of electrons is going to go like so. So we have a vinyl group off of there, and then don't forget to add the rest of the groups. Very important. There we go. Now, ozonolysis cleaves carbon-carbon double bonds. There's only one, so we're going to cleave that guy. In fact, I'm just going to copy this over because it's way easier for me to draw, and it replaces the cuts with an oxygen. Now it said something about K. It said that it contains a signal at 9.61, which fits because these signals, the aldehyde hydrogens, show up somewhere around 9.6 to 9.8. Now we treat things with 5% potassium hydroxide and THF and diethyl ether. So we have base and we have two ketones. So this should scream an aldol reaction. And if we look at the product, we want three five-membered rings. So we know that the ketone that enolizes is gonna be that one. And the ketone that acts as the electrophile is gonna be the aldehyde. That's a weird sentence, but you know what I mean. So what we're gonna get is gonna already include the three five-membered substructures. There we go. We're still gonna have the ketone over there and we're gonna have the double bond. Then we still have the methyl group the hydrogen, and the two methyl groups. Now I realized that I forgot to add the stereochemistry. So look over here, the hydrogens are pointed down. So we're gonna do the same, and the hydrogens over here are gonna be pointed down. It doesn't matter if you do it now or later, or I guess earlier, as long as you get it in before you have to submit the questions. So there we go. And next up, we're just gonna hydrogenate it. So that is just gonna saturate the double bond. There's nothing super crazy about this, so we're just gonna do that. And that is gonna be M, actually, so we should be done with this question here. Now let's double check that this works. So methyl lithium is gonna add in over there, and then Sockle 2 with pyridine 
is just gonna eliminate the water. So yes, that would work. I guess we forgot to read the question, but 8.6, give the structures of J, K, L, and M, including their stereochemistry. We already did. These are the correct structures. So that's the question. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have questions. I will be answering every single one of them. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you want to see covered on this channel, and I'll see you in the next one.